All right, let's close out the weekend. Shout out to everyone joining us. We appreciate you all joining us live on YouTube. Thanks for hanging out with us. Shout out to all the moms in the chat or the people yeah. who have moms in the chat, people who are celebrating motherhood in the chat. Um, give us hearts. Give us hearts. We want hearts in the chat. Uh, it could be for Mother's Day. It could be for just hanging out together, but I want to see it in the chat. Let's close it out. Let's make sure we have a good time. But these final two games, North Carolina Courage getting the win over OL Reign 1-0 in this one. Lisa, this is another one, I think, that I dropped. I, I was like, look, OL Reign's going to have enough. And they're going to get the win. That didn't happen. That did that, not happen. Nope. I have no problem coming out here and exposing myself. Yeah, you and I both good. had OL Rain. Both had OL Rain taking the win in this one, and, and North Carolina does it. OL Rain said six hours, a six hour flight can't do it. And unfortunately, narrow scoreline in this one. All it's needed is one from Tyler Lucy, and North Carolina get all three points against OL Rain at home. Uh, you love to see that for, for North Carolina courage. I, I think, uh, look, this maybe comes down to some, uh, some tactical game planning. Uh, Sean Ahas, I think this was, a this was a good game. This was, I think, uh, I don't want to say it was a put the league on notice kind of game quite yet. Cause we've got again, a narrow scoreline here, but you've got, um, a top, uh, top tier team. You've got a team that you're going up against who's ultimately considered a contender in 2022, or excuse me, 2023. They were the 2022 Shield winners. Mm -hmm. um, and you say, look, this is this is also one of the deepest teams in the league uh, when we're looking at at Owl Rain and, and Laura Harvey and, and the the personnel and, that she has. And it's the team that had the least amount of off season change. I think you can maybe try to run it back, but but. Sometimes in a long season, you hit some bumps. And sometimes in a weekend that is full of weird stuff, you get weird moments. Uh, and maybe this is, is one of those. Maybe maybe the uh, the team that is going through the, the, re, the rebuild or the retool gets the win over the team that is the contender. Right. So I think that was part of the, you know, maybe we're looking at some of the, the that energy in, in, in this one as well. I think when we're looking at um, the the attacker or, or the 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 offense on, on either side of the pitch here, kind of even at times yeah. uh, the goal, we have to talk about maybe how this goal uh, occurs. Again, we're talking about a bit of a oops, a mental lapse, question mark. Uh, what, what, what do you think on this on this goal, Lisa? Yeah, I think a little bit of an oops for sure. The the way that OL Ring gives it away, but it's I mean, two claps for North Carolina because yeah. they're the ones that capitalize on it. It's it's yeah. Madison who picks up the ball and um, deep in the defensive half, of, like in the middle of the field, basically Madsen has it and she has her head up and she understands that Tyler Lucy is on the far side and, and Lucy was ready to run. She is ready to get in behind. And yeah. because North Carolina is so deep defensively, it just allows for so much space for Lucy to run. And Madsen plays this really beautiful ball between Sam Hyatt and Lou Barnes in the back line um, and splits the seam of the defenders with the pass. Tyler Lucy, uh, cuts on the outside and she just gets in behind the back line and really Lucy makes it look easy on this one because Tullis Joyce tries to come out and close down the space but it's just too too much and too little it's too late Lucy finds the back of the net yeah a mistake defensively on OL Reign as they give away that ball but North Carolina was knocking on the door in the opening 15 minutes. Caroline found the back of the net and ultimately it ends up being called back due to Lucy actually being offside. She didn't touch it, but it was a distraction for the goalkeeper um, on a cross that curls into the back post. So it gets called back, but North Carolina had that taste in their mouth because they celebrated pretty good after yeah. that one. Everyone thought it was going to hold and then ultimately gets called back. Thanks to a little bit of VAR, um, and then a, another one, but right by Caroline, right before half, finds the back of the net, but that one gets called back. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Ultimately, Lucy does it, though. 34th minute, she she gets the goal. Look, we're, we're 
talking week seven and, and we're chatting about off season moves and, and, and giving, um, you know, appropriate props and that to teams who made these good moves. And we're like I alluding to earlier in the episode, talking about Abby Smith is maybe under the radar um, key off season free agent signing for, for Gotham, but, you know, maybe for, for North Carolina, you know, engaging in a trade for Tyler Lucy or getting Emily Fox as part of, you know, two good pieces in, in your front line and in your back line to navigate this long season. I mean, you knew they were going to have uh, an incredible uh, capable talent in Caroline, even though she's a young player, feel like still getting acclimated and adjusted to certain levels of play in the league, but you knew that you had a special talent here. So who else is going to be that extra outlet when you have a unique and special talent? And maybe in these kind of early weeks, still somewhat that we're starting to see that in, in someone uh, like Lucy. So uh, I'm, I'm here for it. I, I mean, if you're looking at maybe a week seven upset, maybe this was it for some. Yeah. Folks. I could see that. I could see that happening. I mean, but North Carolina, I don't want to undercut them Mm -hmm. because they're impressive and they're pulling some wins out and and they're putting pieces together, right? They they're on this almost slow build that they have, but this is their third straight week picking up points in the regular season, their third straight game. Um, Yeah, I guess a little bit of the upset, but I don't, it's not to discourage North Carolina by any means. I think they're a very impressive team. No, I think they'll pick up some more, and I think they'll keep uh-huh. upsetting some others along along the way, for sure. Uh, let's chat about the final game that we're going to recap here. We're talking about Houston Dash versus Portland Thorns FC. Houston, again, Lisa, talking about maybe games during the season where they're going to be the springboard for some teams who are still kind of trying to figure th- some things out, still trying to solidify those team identities and present – the level of play on the pitch. Is this the one for Houston? Because they get all three points to one over Portland. Yeah. Big for, for Houston to get this win and, and get these points over Portland. Um, you had Portland getting the win. I had yeah. a draw in this match happening. Love um, to be wrong. <laughs> same because this was a very, very good, important win for Houston. They needed this win. They really did. They were coming yeah. off back-to-back losses. They hadn't picked up a win in quite a long time in this regular season. And now as they go out uh, against Portland Thorns, uh, they host this one in Houston. Um, a comeback win as well. Like they had, This had all the pieces of a really good game for Houston because they concede in the first half, around the 34th minute, um, on a goal from Rocky Rodriguez. That was fantastic the assist from olivia moultrie holy cow kid can play the link up was delightfully disrespectful i mean oh my god i was like olivia you've got elders on the pitch here respect them and she said no i'm just gonna cut it right through and make this happen and it was just great to see that level of of awareness and iq from both these players to know that they can combine like that and it it was the kind of goal and link up that sort of made it feel like this was going to go in the direction of Portland, but that's right. not what ended especially, up standing out. Especially the way the first like 30 minutes of this game was happening because Portland had good sustained pressure. It was, it was pretty back and forth. They were putting the Houston defense um, on their heels a little bit and, and forcing them to make some changes. And then when this goal happens by Rocky Rodriguez, it's Olivia Moultrie picks it up in mid ish field. It was a, corner kick, I believe, a set piece. Uh, The ball gets cleared out halfway to Moultrie, and Moultrie finds Rocky Rodriguez between, like, a hairpin. (laughs) Like, that's how wide this gap was that Moultrie was able to feed this ball in. In the air, she drives it at Rodriguez, and Rodriguez uh, captures it. She controls, brings it down, volleys, finds the back of the net. It was really, really good. But Houston says, hey, there's still a whole other half of football to play, and and we're ready. We are ready for this one because they come out in the second half. um, Ebony Salmon playing that striker. She's starting to finally come into her own. She ultimately is the catalyst for the first goal that Houston gets on the board because she picks up the ball inside the box. She turns to her right. She's inside the six-yard box, and she makes a massive shot. It's a bullet of a shot that forces Bigsby to fully outstretch and parry this ball wide. But because of how hard it's hit, Bigsby Bigsby keeps it in play, and Joelle Anderson is wide open 
wide open. There was no Portland defenders for miles around her. And she just taps it into the back of the net. So that's the opening goal for Houston that equalizes it. And then Ebony Salmon gets one of her own in the 71st minute, her first goal of the season, first goal with Houston this year. Um, She was knocking on the door. It was about time that Salmon got a goal. Uh, I mean, I hear, I hear you. Seven, so we're seven weeks, right? We're talking about weird energy of week seven. No Diana Ardornez in this game. Was nope. it meant to be that Salmon finally gets this goal? Yeah, yeah, I think is, so. Is it? Is it? Is it a like if Salmon if, if this ends in a one-one draw and like Salmon doesn't get the breakthrough on goal without Ardornez on the pitch? Is is this a cause for worry? Do you think like is it like how yeah. is this team still not? you know, gelling quite yet? I would say a little bit, yes, because I think that Ordonia shines much brighter than Salmon when they are on the pitch together. Mm -hmm. And Salmon needed a confidence booster, right? She needed this game where she gets an assist, essentially. It's not counted as an assist, but she forces the shot that gets the equalizing goal for Houston. She has a number of really good shots that miss just wide. There was one right before the goal she got that was just nearly wide, and then she finds the back of the net. So now her confidence has just skyrocketed. And if her confidence is incredibly high, then you put her on the pitch with Ordonez, whose confidence is high, as it should be. Maybe they can create some magic together. And that's what Sam Lady's been waiting to for to happen that's what everyone's been waiting to happen and it hasn't yet so I think it's good that she found a little bit of personal success and individual success this week I, I think the the celebration right the body language says it all just sort of is like finally, finally. Kind of moment. Maria Sanchez like running to try to be the the first person to to yep. celebrate you know with her at providing the assist um continuing to to sort of always be active on the on the ball uh in in wide areas and wide spaces and Finally, these two combine and link up for for a goal, which is not something they were unfamiliar with in 2022. And finally, it comes to life in week seven for them. And it, it's ultimately these two connecting for the game winner and all three mm-hmm. points. So maybe this type of performance can springboard them and maybe get them back on track to, um, you know, kind of get back to those early weeks when we were seeing them get those results. This was a springboard week. <laughs> maybe. I'm calling it the weirdo week and maybe it's a springboard week. I think it's instead. a springboard week for, for Houston, for racing Louisville. We also gave them a bit of a springboard okay. in, in their win over Chicago. Yeah, That's maybe. what it was. It was weird because it was a lot of springboard action happening. <laughs> maybe. Perhaps. Well, what does it mean for Portland? Maybe we'll see. This is a team that hasn't gotten a win in uh, in three weeks now. So yeah. win, winless in three. Uh, kind of a, a dip in in, uh, in results for, for a team that uh, started really, really hot to start the regular season. And 